welcome to the clinical podcast series brought to you by the American Academy of Optometry Foundation. Today's episode is from the interior segment channel entitled Short-Term Tolerability of Commercial Eyelid Cleansers, a Randomized Crossover Study. I'd like to thank our host, Dr. Tom Quinn, and our topical editor and expert, Dr. Kelsey Steele. And now it's my pleasure to begin today's podcast. Welcome, you of curious minds, to the American Academy of Optometry podcast series. In today's episode, we're going to talk about a paper exploring the use of Demodex treating eyelid cleansers. And joining me today, I'm Dr. Tom Quinn, and joining me today as our guest expert is Dr. Kelsey Steele, a clinical instructor and researcher at the Ohio State University College of Optometry and the topical editor for the anterior segment podcast series. Welcome, Kelsey. Thank you so much. Happy to be here. It's so great to have you here. It's fun to be able to work on the screen instead of just behind screen. Exactly. You. Yeah, it's a little I'm change of pace. <laughs> right. So uh, today's paper, tell me what specifically did the authors want to explore? Yeah, so the authors were interested in investigating the short-term tolerability of five currently available anti-demodectic eyelid cleansers to identify if there were any relative differences um, in subject reported levels and duration of ocular discomfort. Um, so okay. the site that they've gotten in anecdotal reports from patients that are using these products regarding irritation on application. Um, and so they wanted to see, you know, clinically with a study, how do we investigate this topic? Okay. Now, let me first cut to the top, to the title of the article. It specifically yeah. mentions randomization mm -hmm. and randomized and crossover. I think we got a handle on randomization. What is crossover? What's that mean? Crossover? Story? Yeah, that's a great question. So I'll break down both parts of it. So randomization, as we know, refers to a subject being assigned either a treatment or an intervention by chance. Um, so under the purview of this study, that means that the subjects were randomized and they were randomized twice, actually, first to determine which treatment or control they would receive at each treatment visit, and then second to determine the eyelid order. So would the treatment be applied right eye, left eye, or left eye, right eye? Um, and all of those were done um, with a computer-generated program, um, and that randomization occurred before even the first visit for these subjects. Okay, so the, the goal being to avoid potential bias. In the right, eye. exactly. So we're not going to, you know, decide ourselves which one we give the patient and what order it is. So a computer takes care of that randomization. As okay. The crossover aspect, crossover trials are trials where the subjects receive multiple interventions so that the researchers can look at the effects or the outcomes that are measured on the same individual. So in this study, that means that all of the subjects receive all six interventional options. Okay, great. Now, what would they find in the study? So the study reported um, that subjective ocular discomfort was experienced with all of the all of the products, every one of them, not the saline, of course, the control, um, but all of the commercially available products out there. There were significant differences, though, in the period of time that irritation persisted. Um, so if you look into the methods, you'll see that they asked the subjects like 15 second intervals for the first five minutes to rate their ocular discomfort and then 30 second intervals after that. So they're constantly like, how do you, how do you feel? How do you feel? How do you feel now? How do you feel now? Um, and so they were looking at, you know, how much irritation, but then also how long it stayed after the initial application. And so, and Kelsey, was yeah. the irritation eyelid and periocular, or was it more ocular surface, or was it was it both? Did, did they clarify? Um, so yes and no. So the authors do note in their limitations um, that the subjective ocular discomfort measures were nonspecific meaning that the, the metrics that they used didn't discriminate between periocular skin and ocular surface irritation. Um, they also mentioned that some of the participants just in conversation reported that they had irritation of the periocular skin, but without ocular surface involvement and vice versa. Uh, but those were just anecdotal comments. It's not something that they investigated. Um, they did provide clinical evaluations of the findings that could potentially correlate to subjective irritation, included um, bulbar conjunctival hyperemia, limbal conjunctival hyperemia, corneal staining, and then conjunctival staining, as well as superior and inferior lid wiper epitheliopathy. 
So those are all that they graded um, objectively, but they didn't actually perform, at least they didn't report any um, statistical evaluation where they correlated the clinical signs to the subjective signs. But if you look at the products that, that had the highest report of ocular irritation, those are the same ones that had more clinical signs. So you can you know, kind of extrapolate that yourself, but they did not report any statistical evaluation of that. Okay. Now you and I, over the years, we've seen enough patients. So we've had those patients that say, hey, I can feel it burn. So I know it's right. working. So can we correlate mm -hmm. clinical efficacy with the level of discomfort? Is there any relationship there? So that's not something that was in the scope of the study. Um, they, they were only looking at the short-term tolerability and they were not assessing any of the clinical efficacy. So okay. I think that's a great point and a really important next step because it would be interesting and I think important to see if there's a correlation between the efficacy of treating the blepharitis and the subjective and objective side effects. Because you know if we have this product that feels a little worse than the other ones, but it works better, then we can feel fine recommending that product. But if that's not true, you know, we see similar efficacy across products that don't feel the same. Obviously, you know, we want to try to keep our patient comfortable and, you know, that would might change which product we specifically recommend or even sell in our office. Okay. But we, that's an unanswered question at this right. point. Yes. Okay. Well, is there anything we can take from this study to potentially man affect how we manage our patients? Yeah, so I think the results of this study um, serve to remind us as, as practitioners of the importance of counseling patients on the potential for developing um, for the specific for this specific study, a transient ocular irritation following the use of these products. Um, the thought is that full disclosure of these potential side effects will help to promote um, more realistic expectations with the use of the products in our patients. And then it also might encourage improved compliance for the recommended treatment. So if we have that discussion like, okay, we've tried some other options. I want to start this new product for you. FYI, it is going to be a little irritating. It's going to sting for the first couple minutes. That's normal. I want you to keep using the product even if you experience that. You know, the patient goes into it knowing what to expect. Well, you know, Dr. Tom already talked to me about this. So you know, I know this is normal and I don't have to discontinue it. Um, and it just kind of sets them up for more success and, and hopefully promotes better compliance with the treatment plan. Another message of don't practice surprise I care. Practice <laughs> exactly, no surprise exactly. I hear. Great. Thank you, Kelsey, for sharing your expertise and time with us. And thank you all for listening. We'll catch you next time. Thanks, Tom. And a special thanks to Cooper Vision for their educational grant to make it all happen. Thank you.